Welcome into post game here on CBS Sports HQ. Ryan Wilson, Joe Musso here. 13 days ago, a freak follow through forced Jared Goff out of a high stakes divisional matchup with the Seattle Seahawks. 12 days ago, Goff underwent surgery on that dislocated thumb. Today, Goff and that thumb would get forced into action against those very Seahawks. Let's see how it all went down in the wild card round. Rams, Seahawks. It was John Wolford. Slated to make his second career start, but mid-first quarter, his day would be cut short. Scary scene as Wolford gets popped by Jamal Adams on a quarterback draw. He would leave, would not return, actually left uh, via ambulance. So that means Jared Goff going to come into action. But first, let's take a look at Russell Wilson and this Seahawks offense, which in the first half, broken as well. Russ, late second quarter, looking for Decan, a little dump off, but Darius Williams jumps it, takes it the other way for six, rands up 13 to three. DK looking for his binky, maybe looking for a couple targets too. Ensuing possession, Russ making up for it here, rolling out of the pocket, off schedule, flips one, just a beautiful ball. Metcalf behind everybody and in four, six. So just like that 13 10 ball game, and everybody's smiling. That was one of Wilson's five completions in the first half. Here comes number 16 with one total thumb. Just turn around, hand it off, and get the job done, Mr. Goff. That's Goff handing it off to Cam Akers, putting Seattle up 20 to 10. They take that lead into the half. Rams 36 and 0 under Sean McVay when leading at halftime because they make plays like this in the second half. Get a little cheeky on the return of the Seahawks, and that one's coughed up. Johnny Hecker with a nice punt, slippery through the hands of DJ or DJ Reed. Rams recover it, and off the turnover, Goff on play action wasn't asked to throw the ball much, but when he did. Guys are that wide open. I don't care if you got no thumb, no pointer, whatever it is. On the money and in for six. Rams up 30 to 13. Left-handed high fives all around. Goff finishing the day 9 of 19 for a buck 55, a touchdown, but no turnovers. Most importantly, uh, are some injury issues to deal with outside of Goff with the Rams. We'll get to all that with our experts right now. All right, let's take a look at Cam Akers in his playoff debut as well. Most rushing yards by a Rams rookie in postseason history. I mean, think of some of those Rams backs. A buck 31 on the ground. Third most scrimmage yards by a rookie in a playoff debut in NFL history. What a buck 76 all purpose. All right, gentlemen, game two of this super wild card weekend is in the books. The Rams moving on to the divisional round uh, here to put the finishing touches on this NFC West playoff clash. Few of our finest, Ryan Wilson, Scott Pioli, Bryant McFadden. Gentlemen, flat out, let's just say it's some of the worst playoff football you're ever going to see. Uh, where do we begin here? I think the obvious place, Ryan, is with that thumb of Jared Goff. The uh, performance that he put forth was not a glowing success offensively, but the only success you're looking for is that win column. He gets it done. How impressed were you by just uh, the call to action for Goff? Maybe he was not expected to start, but his number gets called and he gets the job done. Yeah, he showed incredible toughness. He came out there, you mentioned 9 for 19. Uh, three of those passes, two went for 44 yards, another for 20 yards, and that tells you as much about Goff's ability to play tough as about how the Seattle defense did not show up from start to finish. You also talked about Cam Akers. We saw the graphic, 131 rushing yards, a record. Again, where was the Seahawks defense? And I think that's a huge issue. We'll look and see what happens going forward in terms of Goff's health when they play again next week. We'll find out their opponent uh, by the end of tomorrow night. Uh, will he be healthy enough to go? Will John Walford be healthy enough to go? Will Blake Bortles have to be called up? Those are all questions we'll get to, but I think it was an incredibly impressive performance uh, for Goff, who didn't expect to play, who was playing basically with nine fingers, didn't have to do a whole bunch, but when he was asked to, he completed big passes and let the running game of the defense do the rest. Yeah, all signs pointed to Goff uh, sitting this one out, getting an extra week. Uh, we saw some close-ups of that thumb. Did not look pretty. Uh, gets the job done. Looking at the playoff picture here, if the Saints take care of the Bears, Rams will get the Packers. If the Bears win that one, LA is going to get the winner of the night matchup here. But going back to what we just saw here on Saturday, BMAC, your initial takeaway from this performance out of the Rams is what? Their defense is legit. Their defense has been legit the entire season if you haven't really been paying attention to the Rams play football. I mean, they basically put their entire team on their back and they carry this team along with the ground and pound attack offensively. Aaron Donald is a nightmare. It, he continues to amaze me because it seems like every week he gets better. He is the most dominating player in the game of football. He might be the most dominating player that we've seen over the last decade or so. The job that he's doing 
is something that you can't, you, it won't go unnoticed. And it's now, it's the, it's the domino effect, right? We know who Aaron Donald is as a player, but now the other guys on that defensive front, they're starting to get some of his skill set. They're starting to get some of a, 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 of his hand movement and being able to get, being able to put pressure on a, an opposing quarterbacks. So just seeing what they were able to do, even when he went out of this ball game, it's a thing of beauty because I'm a defensive minded guy. And then look at the secondary play led by another alpha dog in the secondary and Jalen Ramsey. Defensively, Brandon Staley has this group going. They're, 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 they, be, they have a lot of confidence, and I don't see them slowing down anytime soon. And like you said, regardless of their matchup, their defense will, they will have to play better in the next round to be able to advance and keep their uh, playoff hopes alive. We will see what the availability of Aaron Donald is next week. Had that rib injury, tried to test it out, simply could not gut it out. Cooper Cup appeared to also suffer a late non-contact knee injury as well. Scott Pioli, I don't think they're going to be putting together any instructional video from this one, but in what happened here on Saturday and immediately having to get ready with the walking wounded that are the Rams right now, how do you move forward? Well, you just do move forward. I mean, that's the NFL. Every team has players that are banged up, players that are hurt, and you figure it out, and you move forward and try to play. There's no secret weapon, and there's there's no way. Other teams don't care about what your problems are. The Rams have players hurt, and whoever they play next week, I'm sure that team's going to have players that are banged up. So, again, that's just the way the NFL is. Now, we'll see, you know, how Aaron Donald feels. We'll see, you know, where Cooper Cup is. We'll see. But, again, it, it, this is a league that doesn't care about what other people's problems are they actually wish and hope for problems with other teams so whatever their problems are they're going to have to figure it out and be ready to go next week uh, this will go down as russ's first opening round loss of his career also the first home playoff loss in the russell wilson era for seattle scott i'm gonna go back to you here was this more what la was capable to do or the shortcomings here in seattle I think it's a combination of both things because clearly there's shortcomings in Seattle right now. This is not a dominant personnel fielded team by the Seattle Seahawks like they've had in the past. They're a good football team. They're not an outstanding football team. They don't have an outstanding pass rush. They don't have some of the elements that we know that past Seattle Seahawks teams have had. But I want to be very careful here because on the flip side, let's talk about the good and what the Rams were and what the Rams are. Again, the Rams are an above average offense, but they are an absolutely dominant defense. BMAC just talked about their secondary. Jalen Ramsey, their front four or really their front seven so again to me this was a combination Joe of both of those things where it was a lackluster effort and an above average to good Seattle team with Russell Wilson who was not playing at the end of the year like he did at the beginning of the year versus a very very good Rams defense and an above average Rams offense. Yeah, BMAC digging a little deeper here on the struggles in Seattle. It seemed like they were having success downfield. Uh, DK obviously voicing his frustrations. They get off schedule. They hit one deep. Another deep shot that was a little bit overthrown. Were you surprised at just the overcommitment to the uh, run game and the offensive approach that Seattle had here on Saturday? No, I'm not surprised because I, I think they understood the, the beast they were facing, right? Playing against the Rams twice a year, and I think in both matchups, the Rams had success in sacking Russell Wilson. But, so they could not afford to be uh, one-dimensional. They ran the ball 25 times for 136 yards. That's pretty good football. But the issue for their offense was the inability to protect Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is a mobile quarterback. We know he can buy extra time in the pocket. But tonight, he did not have enough change in his pocket to buy more time. They were able to collapse him. They harassed him. He never got comfortable. And you can tell, you saw that from start to finish. And I think that has been the calling card for the Rams defense. You know, having success against Russell Wilson, not allowing him to get comfortable, even when he when he's improvising and trying to make things happen. So they have the, the, they have the crypto night for Russell Wilson uh, and you look at the graphic there they just find a way to collapse the pocket and suffocate him he never got comfortable and you got to tip your hats to the guys that were in the uniform for the Rams and defensively like I said coach Staley drawing up an ideal game plan for Seattle's offense uh, Ryan, I'm going to read you that line here one more time. 9 of 19, a buck 55, a touchdown, no interceptions for Jared Goff. Taking a look at what lies ahead of L.A., potentially, whether that be the Green Bay Packers or let's not get ahead of ourselves, but the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, does this offensive game plan spell any sort of success past Saturday? 
Yeah, I think so. And I think it starts with Cam Akers more than Jared Goff. You want Jared Goff to be healthy, and we say it all the time. Jared Goff is at his best in Sean McVay's offense when the play action works. Well, Cam Akers did it in a game plan where there was no action. It was just play, and the play was handing the ball off, and he had success. Uh, I think, as Scott and, and BMAC have noted, the defense is doing the heavy lifting, and we've seen uh, historically teams that have put Defenses have put teams on their back. We can go back to the Ravens uh, during uh, the Ray Lewis era, the, their first Super Bowl. BMAC can tell you uh, Ben Roethlisberger's rookie year 2004. A lot of that was on the defense, which is really good. The 2008 defense also dominated. And you can get a long ways in the Super Bowl really, really, really good defenses. Piola can, uh, Scott Piola can obviously speak to that with the Patriots. So that's a great starting point. Now, we talked about Aaron, uh, Aaron uh, Donald excuse me, and his health. We'll see what happens there. But even the guys that were filling in for Aaron Donald were getting after Russell Wilson, as BMAC noted. So there are reasons for encouragement. I don't think a lot of people expected the, the Rams to be close. I certainly didn't. And they came out and virtually blew the doors off a Seahawks team that looked lifeless, punchless, and like they didn't want to be out there. Yeah, Aaron Donald, no doubt the building block of that entire defense. We'll see what uh, the prospect is moving forward with his health, Cooper Cup's health, and... They're one quarterback deep right now. The Los Angeles Rams are uh, going to have to go find somebody to back up Jared Goff a week from now. Gentlemen, thank you for the insights as always. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.